in hot is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. Don't you dare, don't you dare, sit. Hey, hey everybody. What's up? Welcome to the show. Uh, it is basically being held together, as always, by Renfrew Pro Tape. But uh, the coming in hot show, as always, presented by Botano. Go to botano.ca. Uh, the game starts now. They are our new online partners. Uh, they are fantastic when it comes to live betting. And we will get to our locks of the day a bit later because we got two today. Uh, Yorkie and Bobby, you did so well yesterday with uh, your one pick. We're going to uh, up it to two and see how that goes. All right. Uh, we need to explain why we're late a little bit. So one is Yorkie had some kind of medical procedure. And two, uh, Bobby's dealing with rolling blackouts in Nashville at the moment. So um, if he goes down... We know why, and we'll just happen to do uh, the show with just Yorkie. <laughs> and Yorkie's mic doesn't work. Yeah. And, and this is how this show is going to go yeah. today. Every single day. Yorkie, yeah. what are you doing, man? <laughs> He's talking. No, you don't have a mic, Yorkie. Uh, so and we can't even start the show all over again. Anyway, Bobby, uh, <laughs> what's going on in Nashville? Um, actually we're, we're good now, but we had rolling blackouts through the night and into the morning and, um, none of it is nearly close to as embarrassing as you're not doing this. Just we got, you, am I back boys? Yeah. Am I, am I back? You breathing. We can hear you breathing. You got me? The, uh, <laughs> you will be docked three minutes of pay, by the way. Oh God. Unprofessionalism. That's it. Somebody oh. owes me a couple of bucks, uh, Yorkie, are you okay? I'm worried. Yeah, listen, I I'm a, I had to book it to get here today. Uh, an hour of rehab. I'm like the six million dollar man right now. They're rebuilding me, uh, both knees, back, wrist, and about a month I'll be as good as new. So uh, that's what that, that's right. why we're starting late. I had the rehab. We weren't sure if Bobby was going to be getting online. You're like, what's going on in Nashville, Bobby? Rolling blackouts? Like you guys losing? Uh, is there like a storm? storm there there was a storm through the night and then i just decided i was like i'm gonna use this and just in case my date went great i'm just i'm just being honest with you guys <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. i thought for sure we were okay all right we've been fooled yeah. okay so uh by the way uh, uh, and i took a header today at the gym and ended up with uh welts on my body so uh it just seems like it's going to be that yeah. kind of day but let's you get took on a show. header and, you and i did it in front of my yeah <laughs> i need a haircut <laughs> my uh my guy who's cut my hair for the last 22 years he's in florida for like three months and i'm a three-week kind of haircut guy so i right? don't know what's going to happen at the end of the three months yeah you're gonna end up you're gonna look like yorkie pretty quickly here <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I just need a little more sun. I'll be in a hat by the end be, of this. It's going to be tough to watch, guys. I can't wait okay. to watch this unfold. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is going well. We've got capology a bit later. We've used uh, Yorkie's math. So I, I've i got lots of questions about how this is going to play out. Uh, yeah, yeah. First, um, by the way, I know, hang on, Yorkie. I, we've we've got a limited time today because you, you've been late. Is uh, We've got... <laughs> Lots to talk about. Um, and one of the things, though, I want to get to early on and just to get I'm not out of the way, but I think it's obviously the topic of the day. It's been all over the news. And that's uh, yesterday in the Bills game, um, DeMar Hamlin, oh. who collapses, goes into cardiac arrest on the field. You guys are professional athletes, by the way. Um, so the reason I ask you this is what you have like, A, you obviously you relate to this because you're in that field. You're you're a professional player. But um What's it like? I guess what's it like to watch and have you gone through something like this or you've seen on the ice or what's the the toughest one that you've witnessed, uh, Bobby? Um, I have. Um, I don't really. Yeah, I, 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 w I would say I have in a sense, but it was long before I was in Anaheim. It was young. Um, don't want to really get into it, but I would say that the only thing that I think sure. the energy or Oh, sorry, the NFL really, really messed up on was leaving those people. And I tweeted this um, 
they just left them on air for too long. Just they just hung those people out to dry. Um, the only thing that you are supposed to do in that situation um, as human beings is to cancel the game and move on, um, like immediately. Like I, I, I think that's that's fair to say. But I, but yeah, I've been part of that, and I, we went back and played the game when I was young and got through that. And um, I think that you're putting players and, and if you're going to do it at that level, it's different. But if you're, you're putting players at exposure for really, really bad injuries, because Yorkie, you can attest to this, your space would not be the same. Like you're not even close. Mm-hmm. You're just, mm-hmm. you're going through things and you're playing the same game at a half speed. And um, I'm glad they ultimately canceled, but I don't think that it should have been a conversation for a long, as long as it was. Yeah. Uh, and, and Wally, you know, from the broadcasting standpoint and, and for my, it's tough enough trying to think of things to say when uh, you're during a broadcast and you keep getting icings and you got to keep saying, but to do what they had to do incredible. I, I, I thought the whole crew did an outstanding job uh, under those circumstances. So for me, I actually, the one time and Wally, you'll remember this when, when Marion hosts the incident with, with, with Brian McCabe and like, that was pretty bad. Like we, Hoso we knew wasn't going to die, but anytime a guy you think is going to lose an eye or it's that serious, that really took the wind out of the sails of that game. Um, but another time when I was coaching, I was actually coaching minor hockey, and and, and one of our players went headfirst in the boards, and um, he got taken off on a stretcher. Uh, ambulance came, and we just and right away we're like, game's over. There was about ten minutes left in the game. We just canceled the game because nobody felt like playing this when stuff like that's happened yep. without even thinking about it it's done because you just it's um it's 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 a human tragedy and and um it's it's not fair for anybody to come back and do that and i'm with you bobby they waited too long and um at the end of the day they did the right thing but those guys no way those guys could have played absolutely no way no yeah uh, and I and I've seen a couple, and I just it is Brian McCabe or sorry Brian Berard. I know he's, but I know he's Brian Berard. Broke. Sorry, I, um, I butchered his Mary, name. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. No, that's okay. I yeah, yeah. that was like the first time that I really dealt with any kind of on ice incident. That was that one. Yeah. Like we ended up staying at Chio Hospital that night because we were told to go there. But I I felt uh, shitty for like stake, staking outside a, ho- a hospital when this kid yeah. you don't know is going to lose an eye or what. Like it was. That was a real eye opener for you. Oh, I shouldn't. That's a bad uh-huh. pun. But that that's was one of those really one. tough times. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dean yeah. McCammond was probably the worst for me. Yeah, uh, live because yeah, when he head. got run over by Steve Downey in 07, that was yeah. that was really ugly for me. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but and sorry, someone just commented. No one asking why I such a healthy stud had a heart attack. I do hear. So I I spoke to Chris Schwartz today actually at the gym, and he's and he said. Because if you guys see the hit, he takes the hit. It, it looks like it's into his chest, and then he pops back up, and then he collapses. And uh, yeah. Schwartzy had told me, he goes, if, if you get bumped into the chest, you can affect your heart rhythm. And that ends up what happens of how you collapse is affects the way you uh, – it gets your heart at a rhythm, and that's why you end up collapsing. So Crazy. you can be healthy. Chris Pronger, uh, he talked about it today. He tweeted about a slap shot he took in the chest. He collapsed on the yeah. ice, and it was about having the effect on your uh, chest, on your heart rhythm. Anyway, uh, yeah. hope he has a full recovery. I know that's tough, and obviously it's ugly, and his mom yeah. is there. And it's, it's such a – like, that's – yeah, it's tough. So uh, we do wish him all the best in his recovery, and what that's going to be, I'm not sure. Um, we move on, and I – unfortunately, I, I don't have a segue to this one. Um, but I want to get to uh, tonight um, – the Sens are playing Columbus. Uh, Eric Brandstrom is back in the lineup. Uh, Barn, Anton Barn, Forsberg Barn. is going to start. Uh, it it is so. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to get right to it with the Batano lock of the day. By the way, um, yeah, this is a game of lesser lights, if you will. But uh, Ottawa, the favorite, obviously. Columbus, uh, the over under six and a half. Ottawa 3-1-1 one, one in its last five against Columbus. Columbus has lost seven straight on the road. Uh, Yorkie, you are there our resident expert. Uh, you tell me. 
Oh, hey, first of all, if you want to make money, listen to this show. Not only did we give the winner yesterday, <laughs> we gave the winner and we parlayed it with the over under taking Boston with uh, under for six and a half. So I'm going to go Ottawa on this one. I, I like how they're playing right now. Power play is going well. They're getting some goaltending. Uh, looks like Forsberg's going to start, right, Wally? Forsberg's starting again? Yep. Is that what we – yeah. Yep. So I, I I think he's going to have another good game. Uh, so if I'm going to – I'm going to lock it in with the Sens. I, I like the Sens to win again, guys. And um, I won't parlay it on the over-under, but I'll just go with the, the win. And I'll say take auto on this if you want to make some money. Yeah, no, no disagreement there. This is just this. I mean, Columbus is absolute, like an absolute dumpster fire. Um, so, so um, I I do realize that I'm here for good quotes, and good quit, uh, uh, good quotes and good quips. But there's there's nothing good about this team, um, other than the fact that Johnny Goudreau could go up and have four points any night. This is just not a it's not a good hockey team. They should win very easily. Yeah, so I'm taking the lock of the day. I'm with you. Uh, I'm all in. I'm all... Lock it in. Lock it in. Okay. I, I well, so what was by the, the way, under I on that game? By the way, one other gym. Six and a half. Did you say six and a half? No, no. I'm taking the <laughs> under. Yeah. Not a chance. Not a chance. So uh, no. <laughs> the last three games between these two, the they have scored five goals or less combined. So I would right. expect it to be under good. six and a half. By the way, I left out this gem. Columbus is two eleven and one on the road this year. So that's tough. Uh, yeah, that's, there, that's tough. Yeah, yeah. So uh, take yeah. Ottawa, or sorry, oh. yeah, take Ottawa. Take the under for that simple. And they're not. The they're not really um, excited about going to Canada and winning. <laughs> no, <laughs> probably not. No, it, Columbus. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway. Um, Yorkie, you brought up uh, Forsberg getting the start and Brandstrom uh, returning to the lineup. The interesting thing I have, so Jacob Bernard Docker sat down yesterday for Brandstrom. Um, DJ Smith said today, oh, listen, the best players are going to play and it doesn't matter who they are. This, this quote to me is lip service. Are you going to tell me the other games beforehand you didn't really want to win, so you didn't play your best players in those games? Like it does like common sense is going to dictate that their top line is going to play more than your fourth line. This is just nonsensical to me. <laughs> well, I think he's just, he's just given the, some kudos to his fourth and third line. They played really well last game. Uh, Lucini had a great game. I think Gambrell was good. So it's just, it's just the coach just take a note and that's, that's a good thing. Uh, but no, you're right. The, the, your top players are going to play your Jeruz, your Debrinkets. Brady Kachuk, those guys are going to handle the majority of, of, of your minutes. And uh, the nice thing is, though, and, and DJ is not afraid to, to to throw that third and fourth line on whenever he wants. And hey, they they've been uh, they've been showing they can do it too, fellas. Like they've uh, they've had yeah. a nice little yeah. run here. And and, and Bobby, we, we talked about it uh, yesterday. A um, couple of guys on the fourth line there. Um, They've been really noticeable. Uh, I thought we didn't mention Gumbrella. I thought he had a pretty nice game too. Another guy just going out there doing his thing. Um, so that's a good thing. Right, right now, I like I like the way this uh, Senators team is is trending. Um, you can say that Brady's not getting as many points right now, but hey, that, that that's the way it's going to be. Your season's going to have up and downs, and right now it looks yeah. like the, the the fourth line's doing some good stuff, right? But I. Yeah, honestly, who cares? You know, if Brady's not getting the same yeah. amount of points because, you, but but you can throw those guys on, um, and I I think you can do that right now. Like I think that um, we we talked about this, you know, off off air, but I think that DJ handled that press conference, I guess you would call it, um, incredibly well um, because he basically said our best players are going to play, and those are going to be your first two lines most of the time. But when those guys get elevated because they're playing well, they get a couple extra minutes. They go from six to nine to twelve, whatever it might be. Like if you can if you can infuse your team with those guys at two to three more minutes, that's a big deal for your team going forward, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I mean I, I might be wrong there, York. You can weigh in on this, but I think that when you get a fourth line that can play twelve instead of eleven or ten, it, it changes things. 
Yeah, especially right now, guys, because you're getting into January and February, and this is when the season gets a little long, right? It's uh, This is when you need that because 82 games, it is inhumanly possible for your best players to have their, their best stuff every night. Like I know I didn't, and it's just on those nights, that's what good coaching does. They recognize that maybe some guys are not feeling it, and then you elevate those guys on the on, on your bottom lines, which you're doing right now. So I think, Wally, that's a big reason why DJ probably made that note, just showing some outward uh, confidence in those guys. So it gives gives them a little pat in the it, back, and uh, it's a good thing. It's it is. nonsense. No, listen, <laughs> if Brady Kachuk went – 10 straight games without scoring a goal. He's still going to play more than Parker Kelly or Austin Watson, because if you need a goal, you're putting him on the ice, not them. Did you see Parker Kelly's ice time last game? I think he was close to 15 minutes. He was about 15 minutes. He was like 15 minutes in that game. It was. Right. Uh, I gotta look like that that's... up. There's no way. There's no way. I think he is. I glimpsed yeah. over I'm, it the I'm, other I'm, time. Go Hold back on, and take no a way. look at that. Take a look. Take a look. I'm, I'm having a flashback here. I went over it quickly the other day, but I, 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 I'm thinking he was close to 15. Take a look there, Bobby. But uh, I'm, hey, well, well, no, I'm not. Yeah. Well, you like it. Okay. Hang on, hang you're on you're there. intrigued now, aren't you? are intrigued now, aren't you? But uh, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at Wally. He's looking right what now, too. What number should know this? 45. <laughs> It usually has his name next to it. Yeah, he played fifteen thirty. Okay, hey, he played fifteen. Yeah, which is this isn't. <laughs> this isn't just a. This isn't Bobby. This isn't just a pretty face here with great hair. I uh, I'm doing the research. <laughs> <laughs> at, at some point, I'm gonna have to part my hair a certain way just to be part of this podcast. Okay, take that hat <laughs> off right now. <laughs> take that hat off right now. And I want the viewers to yeah, see because it's gonna be it's gonna be Beetlejuice when you take that hat off. Just quick little, let's see it quick. You're, you're gonna you do gotta this show. Right now? I want to see it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, all right. All right. Um, Fair enough. I don't. I was trying to. We're. <laughs> We're moving on because right. we got to get to capology. Let's, let's, so let's fifteen watch, minutes. Uh, Parker Kelly. Parker Kelly paid fifteen minutes <laughs> okay. last game. So there you go, Wally. Fifteen minutes. Uh, okay, hold on. We can't. All right. So that may be, um, but when you've got guys who aren't playing well on your fourth line, you don't necessarily sit your first line. You sit third line players, and so like. Derek Broussard played 721. Well, they need another right winger to play. So, yeah, Parker Kelly got to yeah. play some more minutes. He also played. And there's a lot of PK. A lot of PK. A lot of PK. It was a lot of PK. He played two minutes on the power play. Or penalty kill. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a like PK he, guy. So He played the most as a forward on the uh, PK. But that's, that's oh, wow. a sign of, I'm telling you, that's a sign. If coaches that continually just run their big guns all the time, that's how you lose your guys as the season goes on. Because if you don't throw some cookies to your other guys once in a while, how do you expect them to always come out and just play hard for you every night? I know it's your job and everything, but human nature, you have to, guys that get it, throw some crumbs to the bottom yeah. part of the roster and they'll do cartwheels for you. They'll, they'll do handstands yeah. for you. They're like, look, look at Lucini. The guy got in the power play. Uh, 27 year old guy that spent his entire career in the minors gets on the power play, gets his first NHL goal. That's a good thing because it's really good yeah. for the culture inside your dressing room. It's uh, and that's people can criticize DJ for maybe a lack of structure or that, but one thing I think he's good at is recognizing how to reward certain players and how to yeah. throw a few crum throw a few crumbs here feed the pigeons a little bit it's uh it's an art form but i i think i think that's one of his uh i, I know that's you that's, say that? uh, that's, okay, uh, feed the pigeons um feed some, the pigeons, uh, i love it yeah. feed feed them you got to sprinkle out there but no it's a good thing and 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 the and it's it's even better when those players come through for you is that on the peeper that you called it yesterday the peeper the power play <laughs> 
<laughs> you never you gotta, heard that. You got to feed a couple of pigeons on the peeper. Okay, no. perfect. You gotta <laughs> throw a few, just sprinkle it out there, no. pluck them up. Yeah, and no. Then, uh, you look like a genius. You look like a, a genius one. when one of them scores, yeah. And then you look like a genius, or maybe not a genius, but you look good when they score for you. Yeah, for sure. But but like, okay, all right. We're gonna move why on. Do you find I, this I just... so, why do you find this so hard? It's not that difficult. I, I don't. I don't. I've seen it. But just to say that you know your top guys are not going to get the minutes is just it, no. That's come on now. So Tim Stutzla is going to play less than Jake Lucchini or Shane Pinto? No, 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 Wally, no, no, no. That's not going to. That's not going to happen. I mean, you're overdoing this, bud. There is not what he was doing. <laughs> you, hey, Wally, was this doing. isn't your Wallace. Is this this isn't yeah. your steak? You're not trying to overcook it. Don't overthink it. Don't overcook it. It's a little. It's, I'm not it's one game. It. I just don't know why coaches say this nonsense stuff. Listen, don't tell me the best player. Of course, you're going to play to win. That's all I'm okay. saying. I, I, just why do you bother another thing, saying this stuff? And another thing too, like if you're a coach, you got to go out every day and talk to the media. Like you're running to things to say, and you're I know. like, what am I? I what am you're I tired. Doing? You're tired. We don't. Yes, like, I agree well, because you get the same questions like, every day. You My God, remember Dave years. Cameron? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, Dave and Cameron, Cameron, and we would literally have bets on how many times we could say, you know, in the media, <laughs> like, like we're we're not thinking about the Obvious. media as much as you guys are. We were just having fun. Uh, well, obviously this, and yes, you know, and I uh, concur. And, uh, and, and, you know, like, and, and if we just play our game, you know, and then you just do your thing, and you know, and then Wally you know, goes, you know, "Oh, great! I got a great clip." <laughs> Well, obviously, we got to play 60 minutes tonight, Wally, and uh, obviously, it's a good question, and you know, well, it's going to play yeah. 60, and you know, it's uh, I'm surrounded by good guys, and, uh, and uh, yeah. I think guys do it on purpose so they won't get interviewed, so they're like, I'm going to be so bad that he won't ask me again to do an interview. Anyways, let's they, move on. We're so that, we're, Sean we're just beating it. that way. Sean Mc really? Sean McEachern hated being interviewed, so he just gave out terrible clips so i would just go to other people and then mark borvietsky would always say great question wally so i always went to him because it was always nice to hear this question was terrible but he always used to butter me up <laughs> I, i'm sure the people online are finding this conversation fascinating too on how yeah. long players we could spend all day to get out of doing a interviews. Lot of bur lot of barn burners happening right now <laughs> all right uh I, this show by the way I'm just going to interrupt and throw in a sponsor, Reed. Uh, this show brought to you, as always, by Renfrew Pro Tape. They are the leaders. They actually invented uh, re uh, hockey tape. RenfrewPro.com, uh, by the way, located in the Ottawa Valley. Um, been around for 40 years. Uh, if you need proper tape on your stick, you go to the ones with the green core. They are the industry standard when it comes to pro hockey tape. You can get them anywhere, uh, all major retailers, if you want, uh, which includes Canadian Tire, Pro Hockey Life. Um, sport check all of them go to pro hockey uh go to renfrewpro.com check them out also follow them on instagram there's always tons of giveaways they have set up there okay uh on to the next potato lock of the day that is team canada versus team usa oh. uh, <laughs> in the uh, semifinal, which is uh it should easily be a simple pick for bobby but um i'm guessing he's probably going to pick the wrong team so let's say uh, Bobby, what are you going to take in the USA Canada game? I mean, you're used to coming in second. <laughs> okay. oh, wow! Wow! Okay. Just... Wow! All right. Didn't, did not know I was going to get kicked in the dick today, but okay. Um, I am. <laughs> I'm taking the US team, um, and it's not because I don't love the Canadian team. Um, I think that Connor Bedard changes the game every time he's on the ice. I think that we can all agree with that. But I'm going to take the U.S. team because I think their goalies are a little deeper. Um, mm. But I, I like I, I don't know. I don't know if that's accurate or not too because the goalie was the goalie was pretty good, um, you know, through through overtime and some saves. But no, I I'm taking the U.S. team. I'm I'm, I'm going with the U.S. And um happy to wear I'm happy to bet on anything with this one, Harry Yorkie and Bali. Whatever you guys want to bet, I will bet. I, I got a hundred riding with a buddy of mine. I'll start wearing jerseys. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, well, I'll I'll throw out a disclaimer here first, guys. I'm actually not a big World Junior guy. I watch it, but for about ten years, I didn't watch. I got cut, Bobby. I got I got cut, so I was bitter for like ten years, and I boycotted <laughs> watching. <laughs> it's, a, like, it's a hard team to so... make, dude. It's a hard team to make. Fair. Oh, li- listen, <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't that tough. It was just. It wasn't a first rounder, so I didn't get on the team. That's how uh, it yeah, was. Uh, no, that's fair. I was, I was so. Anyways, I was so sour. It uh, watched it now, watching it this year. Man, that Bedard, that Bedard kid is so good. I got a hard time betting against him. He's feeling it right now. He just broke the record for scoring in the tournament. Um, best <laughs> player in the world right now. In five games, guys. Yeah, talk about yeah. you think. <laughs> yeah, t- talk about being on a heater. He, he has. <laughs> There's a heater for you. So the next two players combined have the same number of points as Connor Bernard. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I. I don't know. And I. Sorry to interrupt, Wally, but I. I or um, Yorkie, but I don't think that we're ever going to see a player like this before again. I just don't. I just. I don't know. I. I don't know. Like Crosby didn't do this, right? Ovechkin didn't do this. This is different. Um. He can play in this tournament for two more years, guys. Crazy, crazy. I, so yes, he won't, won't, but yes. No, yeah, no, he's yeah. done. He's he's gonna, you know, he'll be in the NHL next year, and I'll be playing for a uh, whoever it's gonna be. But like, like, have you ever watched like watching that game yesterday? You're just like, I think that we're watching one of the best players that we've ever seen wear that jersey at that level. He. Uh... And he's 17. He, yeah, so I'll I'll finish my uh, my prediction on who I think. The reason I like Canada, and I and I think it's a pick 'em right now. The U.S. has got a great team. Canada's got a great team. I like the fact yeah. that Canada's had to face. I like the fact they've had to face some adversity twice now. They lost they lost that game to to check, and they just had to win a very tight game in overtime. And their best player came through from them. So it's going to be a close game. There's going to be adversity. I like the fact Canada's had to go through it. So if I was forced to pick a, somebody, I'm going to take Canada just because I think they face that adversity and they pass the test. So it's a pick okay. but I'll take Canada. I can't get mad at that. That's fair. Yeah, it's reasoning. Uh, the over-under is six and a half. Is there any reason to think this is going to be over six and a half goals, Bobby? No. No, it's going to be a tight game. Yeah, I'd agree with that for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Both, both, take both the teams. under and take Canada. The neutral, yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. But the neutral zone is going to be a nightmare early on for both teams. <laughs> you just picked them. <laughs> yeah, you just you said take me. the over and Canada, and then you oh, said, yeah, that's right. Sorry, the under in Canada, but <laughs> the neutral zone is going to be hard for for the first half of the game for sure. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay. No, it's going to. I agree. see this one play out. Me too. It's going to be a great game. Ryan Boucher and Ostopchuk going head to head for all of Sens fans to watch this one. Um, all right. So, with that in mind, we're going to move on to uh, capology. Uh, so, first of all, uh, BEI. I'm going to get uh, into two uh, sponsor reads because I don't know how this is going to play out. So, first of all, uh, <laughs> BEI is always one of our presenting sponsors. Go to BEI.com, or BonishereExcavating.com, uh, BEI, helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. They are the okay. leaders in construction and civil engineering in the in the Renfrew Valley. And uh, finally, Montana's. Welcome to the show, Montana's. Um, it created a little bit of a debate yesterday about how people should prepare their food. Um, but they are uh, a great restaurant. Uh, you should always go to Montana's and ask for the well-done steak. Uh, the wings were great. Um <laughs> They have got uh, all kinds of stuff going on. What? We we have to talk about the well done steak thing. I'm I'm done with this, man. <laughs> like we're we're gonna have to like really get into this one more time. But yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll have a cooking show later. Um, you know what? Deal. If if Canada wins, I'm going to cook you a steak. A well done steak. I don't want that. No. <laughs> like that's just, yeah. That's <laughs> No. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'll cook you dinner. If I win, I get to cook you dinner. It's just nice to know I can get a meal from you, Wally. 
<laughs> so Wally, wa Wally, well, Wally, if say that after. So if, if you're wrong though, you gotta eat. You gotta eat Bobby's bloody red steak that's barely, Listen, barely Yorkie. still alive. So that's the deal. Nobody He's going well you. done. Well, that's your key. You gotta, I, what's the hey? If I'm cooking a steak, I'm ripping the horns off. We're walking her on the fire once, and then that's it. We're eating it. <laughs> there you go. And, and Wally, <laughs> yeah, bon appetit. I, yeah, I, boy. I, okay, all right. I'll try mm -hmm. it. Um, but anyway, go to Montana's.ca. Look up your location that's near you. If you're going to the game tonight, uh, you should stop in. They're in Canada Centrum. Anyway, uh, Montana's on Mondays half price wings. By the way, Wednesday, all you can eat ribs, which is coming up tomorrow. So uh, get ready for that. Mm, see? Uh, all right. So uh, Yorkie said, listen, I'm going to solve I'm going to solve the cap issues for Ottawa when they become a contender with Brady Kachuk uh, at the peak of his career. Or at least in the next, well, we'll say in three years from now. 25-26 uh, season. So... Uh, Yorkie, you can take us through this. I disagree with some of your selections, uh, but you can, uh, if you want, discuss what you've done here. Well, first of all, let me put my uh, capologist glasses on here, Wally. <laughs> and this is the thing. I, I, I think if Ottawa, you like the glasses, right? I think if Ottawa, yeah. if you realistically, realistically look at this team and where their core is at, and by the core, I mean Kachuk, Stutzla, Norris, Bathurst, and Giroux, <laughs> I think next year they should be a playoff team. I think they could be a playoff team, and then the year after, yeah. I think they've got. I think they've got an opportunity to, to maybe make a little bit of noise in the playoffs. So the big hot button topic is how do you re-sign DeBrinket and fit him into the mold? I'm by saying by showing this um, salary structure, Wally. I'm not saying it solved yeah. it. I'm just saying this is where they're going to be at, and they're actually going to be over the cap. With with this projected yeah. uh, with this projected top six, so my thing is, I think there are over ninety million with with this roster we've yeah. presented. So and this is having to bring it at eight million dollars, which is going to be a yeah. discount, which I I still think is going to be difficult to to get because he's playing that well. Um, but I just wanted to illustrate what Ottawa's team could possibly look like in a couple of years time in a couple of years, Claude Giroux will be in the last year of his contract making 6.5. I know Claude keeps himself in great shape. Uh, smart guy, cerebral player. I don't think you're going to see much decline in Claude's game in a couple of years. Stutzla, I think no. by that two years, two, two years from now, Bobby's going to be a premier player. Brady's going to be better. You got Norris, you got Batherson. But the big thing for me is by then, Pinto is going to need a new contract. If you guesstimate so, what you think he's going to be at, he's going to probably be at around four, four or five. That's a pretty good discount yeah, as well. I, right, Bobby? I'm not and then agreeing on you. I, I love your lineup, Yorkie. I, I, sorry, I don't mean to jump in on, but I love your lineup. But I'm just trying to figure out how that Pinto gets the four or five because I don't know if he can. Um, yeah, yeah. I, and that's a guess. He's, it, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's never going to get elevated enough to be what you would call a scoring forward. But he's mm -hmm. never going to be unelevated enough to not be your checking center. Like, he's just kind of in the spot, right? Um, yeah. I, I I really like the player, but I don't see that him... I, I actually see a problem with him when it comes to the next contract. I really do. Um, yeah. Between what I think he's going to be and what he thinks he could be. The, you know, the for interesting, me, I, the, yeah, like that. that I mean, the, dude, he can shoot a puck. He can shoot a puck. So, is he going to be know. that? Is he going to be? Is he going to be that really good two-way centerman the teams really covet? Like a smart guy that you put in good defensive like situations. He's a, he's a right. Here's the other thing: you got Stutzler and Norris, both left shot centers. Wouldn't it be nice to have a really reliable two-way? right shot center iceman on your roster that you're going to have for a long time. I, I, I love yeah. the IQ. I love the hockey. I love the hockey sense. And I love that it comes with some scoring touch as well. 
uh, I yeah. just find right shot center, and it, it it's still so early, and that's the tough spot with trying to project where guys are going to be at. All you can really do is is look at what they've done, and and we had this discussion yesterday. I really want to see how Pinto plays down the stretch here when the games come a little tougher. There's a little more meaning in these games. Uh, he had that hot, hot start. Let's see how he finishes off this season. For me, I think the most intriguing uh, moves they're going to have to make are on the blue line. Because if you project yeah. two years from now, Jake Sanderson's going to need a new contract. If you want to be a really good team two years from now, Okay, wait, we're not Shabon. done. With the, don't go to the D yet. Hang on. Okay. Well, that's... We're not, that, that, but Wally, the that's... Over. There's no... <laughs> but that's... Dude, you, but, we're not but allowed Wally, to go to that, the D yet. That, but that's where it ties in <laughs> on what you can do with your forwards and, and what you can't do. Because if you want to go and give Debrinket probably the money he's going to deserve, you have to be mindful of how much am I going to have to pay Jake Sanderson? We're going to have to bring in a veteran okay. defenseman. What's what's going to be the cost of a veteran defenseman two years from now? Okay, just uh, is it five million? Go back so to the forwards for a second. Well, yeah. Okay. The reason I say that well, is in two years, you listen. I, I just want to get to the bottom of this because in two years, a you think DeBrink is going to take eight million? I'm not sure that that's the case. Uh, the I'm not saying. I'm not. You have is. Well, you you did. You said he's eight million. You guys got me. This is Sorry. this is yeah. yeah, Wally. This is this is a projection on where the Sens could potentially be if you're looking at where this team's going to be two years from now. If you want to sign to Brinkett, and it shows you that if you want to be an elite team, it's going to be really difficult because you're going to have to make some tough decisions because with this pers- yeah. with this potential roster it doesn't fit like someone from no, this doesn't. group okay. is is, go- is okay. going to have to go that's that's the point to be made here what all right hang on a second what if Shane Pinto takes three and a half that gives you another million to give to Alex to bring it yeah and 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 who knows where Pinto is going to be at and that's the thing with a young player a lot's going to be said with how he finishes his year off. Does he does he continue to score? Does he struggle? Um, what's Jake Sanderson yeah. going to be worth? That's why that's why that's the big thing for me is where is Sanderson when his contract's up after next season? What number is he going to be at? Because he's I, he's your he's your number two defenseman of the future. Yeah, no, I, I'm huge, not. Okay. I'm not. I'm I'm with you guys that I. I don't know if we can switch the board to the defensive side yet. Wally, I don't know if that works for you. I'm not done with the forwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'm just telling I you. I will right tell now, you but... when. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Do you want me to weigh back in on whoever the fuck Castellick is? <laughs> okay. Um, we, we like Mark Castellick. By the way, you don't have Parker Kelly in this lineup. You, you have well, uh, Boucher and... Greg, as your uh, wingers, yeah. um, there are a few others, right? So, is this just yeah, anybody just pretty... that's a regular rookie deal, entry level contract kind of guy? I well, this, this, it's it's inter- it, yeah, it's yeah, interchangeable. Sorry, it's like is is Bush, we don't we don't know if Boucher is going to be ready by then. We think Greg's going to be ready. It's it's all projecting. Castellick looks like he's going to be a really good fourth line center. Uh, who yeah. Parker Kelly could be that thirteenth forward. It could be somebody else. It could be Crookshank. Nothing's set in stone here. This just shows you of what the cap could potentially be at if you give DeBrinket eight million dollars and you factor in yeah. where the D is going to be. What happens when you add in a, a real top four defenseman? Like right now, with all due respect to Travis Hamnick, he's not a top four defenseman. So when this team yeah. is ready to become a really good team and you have to pay to have a top four defenseman, it comes with a price tag and it's not $3 million. Um, re- I'll give you an example. A really good top four defenseman right now, probably on, I would say, one of the best contracts if you want a top four defenseman. Um, you look over in Calgary right now, uh, Rasmus Anderson. I think he makes four or five, yeah. four or six. Yeah, yeah. That is... That is a top four defenseman on a bargain basement contract. That's a right yeah. shot, D. You get a guy like that in your lineup, 
you are massively upgrading your back end and you are a way better team in the playoffs and it's going to help this team incredibly. Yep. And that's the type of player that Ottawa is going to need two years from now when they're ready to take that jump to compliment Sanderson, Zub and Shabbat. Um, yeah. And that's, and that's, those will be decisions made in a year and a half from now. I was going to say, to, to, I mean, to your point there, I don't think they need that right now, but I think they will need. No, that. they don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, and, and, just let, and your guys, let your guys be your guys right now. Um, let JBD come up. Um, I actually like Clevin. I don't know if he's, but I think Clevin's going to be kind of your Mark thought guy. He's going to be the guy that's probably yeah there to settle things down. So I think that, you know, we're looking at this board, but I think that Clevin will literally go up to one, two, three, or four, or not one or two, but you know, the, he's going to go up yeah. the ranks here because he gets to, he gets to solidify whatever Shabby and Sandy are doing. Like that's his role. Yeah. And he just gets to do that. I think that he, I've been watching some of his games. Like, I think that's what he's going to be, but I, I, I you know, yeah. I don't know. I, I hate looking at this and you're, you know, we're talking about cap and stuff like that. Um, I think that JBD is a really, really, I, I think he's going to be a really good defenseman. I just don't think he's there yeah. yet. Uh, and I no. don't think there's any reason to rush that. But when you have two defensemen that are shabby and sandy, you just let them be what they are, and then you insulate everything else around that. And I hope that they do that correctly. I really do. And, and, yeah. and you already kind of have the tube, right? But you have to you have to do that correctly the rest of the way. And the other, the <clears> other <throat> thing is, too, this is a, a, a big discussion point here. I, I like Cam Talbot right now. Two yeah. years from now, he's going to be, I think he's going to be 37 years old. Is he going to be your number one goalie? Probably not. So what's oh. the price tag for a number? What's the price tag for a number one goalie? Forsberg, is he going to be a number one? Probably not. You never know. Time will tell. He's still like, like he's, yeah. he still has some things to prove in the league. So there's, for me, when when people talk about signing to Brinkett, it's not as easy as people think because you have to factor in what's going to happen, and and time will tell because yeah. who knows to your to your point, Bobby, how quickly is Bernard Docker going to develop? Maybe it happens sooner yeah. than later, and that's the nice thing for the Senators. There's going to be time for these things to play out because you don't have to go out right now and grab that veteran D and pay, and pay for him. You can, you can you let, let things play out. You can let things play out for a while. You can see what happens the rest of the year here with certain guys. So time's on their side. And the nice thing is the team's playing well right now. They're, they're winning, they're competitive. And then all these things will play out. Yeah. Yeah. Let, I, you know, Honestly, they're playing, I mean, their last 15 or whatever it is, just let them play that way. Just let them play that way. And, and then you start, then you start to figure out things and who's your group and who's your core from there. Is that, if that makes sense. Exactly. No, exactly. Right. Yeah. I think goaltending is an issue well, here. If, uh, well, it, well, it yeah. is, but yeah, well, yeah. We'll talk about that for an hour, Wally. But yeah, no, you got you got a guy that's getting you there right now. Um, just let that be the guy. But I do think that you have to you have to overpay a goalie to come play there right now, right? Because yeah. the team's yeah. not solidified. Like, and <clears throat> excuse me. So York, you can you can touch on this right now. But if you go into a free agency right now tomorrow. And um, I'm just going to use the name. If Carey Price is the number one person out there in the world, I'm just using the name. And you say, yeah. hey, Price, yep. we're going to give you 10 million bucks to come in. He's got questions. At $10 million, he's still got questions because nobody knows what this team genuinely is yet. Like this has to develop yeah. and they have to get better in a certain area to have an attractive goalie come there. I think I, I don't think that's wrong to say, Yorkie. No, no, for sure. It's uh, the senators are in, they're in a they're in a position right now. Of they're building their identity. They're 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 trying to get back to the stable franchise they used to be, and and uh, yeah. it it turned into what it was at the beginning of the season when this team was was where they were three and eight when it looked like it was going to be a dumpster fire, and and now things are settling <laughs> in, and 
it's going to be really important the second half of the season. And I'm in, I'm really intrigued. We mentioned this yesterday to see how young players play when some of these games get more meaningful, because now they yeah. put themselves in a position where you're playing and you still can say, Hey, we have a chance to make the playoffs here. So there is a, it's yeah. hey, Bobby, it's that different kind of, it's that different kind of pressure when you know, if, if you win, you've actually got a chance to make the playoffs, albeit a slim chance, yeah. there's still something to play for. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a very intriguing second half. I agree. I agree. 100%. The only issue with that is just the Talbot is up at the end of the year at UFA. So, and Forsberg yeah. is the following year. So all you, but you have to find a goalie to fill in mm-hmm. order to get to your two years from now. So I think you're going to have to pay him six and a half. Yeah. You're always yeah. going to find and, a goalie well, though. It depends on what kind of goalie. Yeah. Like, and, and do you want thing... two average goalies or do you want a cup contending goalie? I don't, it depends. I don't think we're it gonna depends. Have a cup contending goalie. That's just me. I yeah. just, I, 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 I think don't... you're. Yeah, I think I. Okay. I mean, I think you're just trying to fill space right now as a goalie. I, I, I hate to say that, but I think that's just the way it is right now. And let's be honest. I, I really think the goaltending position, even though it's the most important position in come playoff time, like your goalie is your most important player. There's not really those guys out there that you used to that you used to go after in free agency or at the trade deadline. You say, okay, we're bringing this guy in because he is a legit number one, and he's going to come in and change the face yeah. of our franchise. There's not many of those guys out there anymore. It's a lot of teams are going with one A, one B, or they're going with two guys. They're playing their backup more. Look at Colorado, for example. They they, they just won the cup with Kemper, and and he's off to a new team. So uh, besides Vasilevsky couple other guys i don't find there are those guys that he's such so much better than the rest of the guys that you have to have them so it's it's a little bit different and the other last point i'll make here guys we all know this team's going to be sold there's new ownership coming here probably going to come in um, and start things over here in the summer i would have to think if new ownership's going to come in here they're going to want to win and be successful right away because whoever buys this team is going to have extremely deep pockets. And I think they're going to spend close to the cap because they're going to want to win right away. They're going to come in, make us make a splash, sell tickets, take this team to the next level. So I think it's going to be a little bit easier to attract some free agents. Although Ottawa sometimes is, I know people don't want to hear this. It's a tougher sell in other markets, but I think new ownership with deep pockets is coming and they're going to come with a plan. New arena. I can see the plan. New arena, all that stuff. And then it's this is going to be a team, in my opinion, that's ready to win in two years if they make the right moves. Two years. Maybe you can work it into your contract. You get a you get a cameo in any Ryan Reynolds movie. <laughs> Why not, eh? Why not? If, if Ryan Reynolds is buying the team, uh, I'm... And a hundred percent be in the movie. It's just part of the process. <laughs> <laughs> you'll you'll be coming back, right? Out of retirement. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Ryan, I will give back my money if you let me into a movie. Because you still get another one eight next year. <laughs> Is he still, yeah. he's still uh, I, you know what? That's fair, buddy. Jesus I'm the Christ. third highest player on the payroll right now and I don't even play, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> there was one point, Dion Phaneuf, when he uh, got traded to LA. Uh, and they came into it. He was the highest paid defenseman on the Ottawa Senators roster until Shabby got signed. Yeah. And he was because oh, yeah. of the bio. Anyway, um, Yorkie, I have good news. Last thing on your uh, your capology recipe for success that you've done a phenomenal job with. Um, the cap Thank hit Thank is you, expected Mark. to be possibly, um, by the way, this is, uh, I, I, I didn't <laughs> know you were a teacher of math. Uh, <laughs> um, where's my glasses? You, uh, in two <laughs> in two years, I think the cap three years the cap is expected to hit ninety two million. So you are under yeah. it if you can get to this cap in three years. So you may have solved the issues. Okay, we'll see. Time will tell. Time will tell. Great. Now, if you could just do my taxes. Yeah, you're asking a lot there, buddy. You're asking a lot. No. The, uh... <laughs> Wait. I can't even. So, I can't hey, even Bobby, wait, guys. I, who... I, I mean, I'm just trying to tie shoes over here. 
<laughs> so I have no idea. <laughs> uh, uh, before we go, uh, Bobby, if there was uh, – because Yorkie would be Mr. Bean. If there was ever a guy that you were to play in a movie <laughs> or a lookalike, who would that be? My lookalike? Like, like okay. yeah. Well, yeah, what? like if – like, would you have Tom Cruise play Bobby Ryan? I mean, Tom Cruise couldn't tie my shoes. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, can I get back to you on this tomorrow? Like, this is insane. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I think that it would be, and if you're, you're going to have to Google this, Emil Hirsch. Emil Hirsch? Nobody Emil? knows who that is. Emil Hirsch. Yeah. yeah. Look him up. No, good job picking the obscure guy. <laughs> <laughs> thanks guys yeah yeah yeah. just pushing that off <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. all right i yeah I, i'd say ryan reynolds you know i look a lot like a hundred percent yeah ryan Same barber. reynolds <laughs> <laughs> Same barber. a lot of dead silence there uh, yeah nothing okay. i got nothing uh, for you there all right so listen uh Nice job. We'll uh, we'll put together something else later about uh, tradable players and the trade deadline and what's going to happen there. But for now, uh, we are back Thursday. Um, we're hoping to have a special guest, maybe. Uh, so we will update that when uh, we because, as you know, with players, you never know if they're going to show up guess. or not. So yeah, we got to We will yeah, see. I don't like know. to throw it out there just in case. Yeah, yeah we got a guest. Uh, all right. Uh, I guess go finish your snack, Bobby. Uh, we will talk to you guys on <laughs> Thursday. See you, everybody. Thanks for following along. You guys have a great night. See you, everybody. Bye, guys.